What up, guys? What up? Flaming Balls of Fire pay-per-view tonight. Flaming Dong of Fire, Great Balls of Fire, blah, blah, blah. Stupid name. Uh, the kickoff show match just ended. It was all right. It was pretty good. Tazawa, it seems to be, this is the standing thing they're going to do, I guess, with Neville, is everybody he fights comes that close to beating him, and Neville does something dastardly at the end to win. And that's pretty much what happened. Uh... Tozawa did have a good amount of offense towards the end. Like I said, it just looked believable enough he was going to win, but we all knew he wasn't. If Arias didn't win, he ain't going to win. So, uh, kickoff match when it's predicted. Neville is still the reigning Cruiserweight champion. Well, a little shocking how they're starting off the pay-per-view with basically a main event of the match. But they're starting off the show with Bray Wyatt for Seth Rollins. Like I said, pretty shocked, but uh, hopefully it's a really good match then because uh, it's going to be hard to follow, I would assume. But uh, Seth Rollins is out in his, uh, I don't know if it's his last elite's gear and nothing new with Bray. And, uh, too many announcers. I hate this part. Too many announcers. But uh, let's see how this match goes. I did predict, I think, Seth Rollins will win, even though I want Bray to win. So far, Bray Wyatt firmly in control. Some of the major things he did, they were outside on the apron fighting, and he basically head-dived Rollins headfirst into the stairs. He followed it up with uh, shoulder tackling Seth Rollins into the guardrail. And now he's got him back inside the ring in a submission hold. Like I said, he's been uh, so far just dominating, which old school wrestling will tell you something. It's not going to end well for Bray. Bray hit Rollins with a DDT outside the ring on the, on the apron. It was just sick. He followed it up with a big splash, but he missed, and Rollins slowly but surely started gaining uh, his control of the ring, the mat. Uh, he had a sling blade and followed it up with a blockbuster on got a two count that was pretty much the most he's done so far now he's just doing wear down moves on Bray trying to uh, wear him down <laughs> damn Wyatt had uh, Rollins and the sister Abigail Rollins fought out Bray responded with an enziguri and a huge clothesline on Rollins he went for a pin he kicked out Rollins somehow got a broken falcon on Bray and went for the uh, for the pin, and he got a two count. Now they're both just laying there. Bray with a huge Uranagi followed up by a two count. Huge, man. On the replay, it's this is just beautiful. That was like some Undertaker type stuff right there. You hear that music playing? Bray Wyatt be Seth Rollins. In a, in a match that he basically dominated. I'm definitely in shock. I'm sure everybody sitting at home right now is just doing one of these. <laughs> wow. What's this mean for Bray? I hope it just isn't like a one and done. This is going to be the biggest win. Wow. Second big of his biggest win of his career. Other than winning the title. I mean, come on. He just beat Seth Rollins. Wow. Great match. Wow. Well, there goes my perfect record for the night. But he's uh, sitting in the ring screaming, This is a man. And he's pointing to Rollins. And he's like pointing to himself. And he's like, I am a god. Great match. Damn. I, I, I want to keep talking, but... Wow, Seth Rollins lost to Bray Wyatt. Well, the next match out is Enzo versus Cass. And I gotta say, Enzo got cut like another five, eight-minute promo in the ring. Way better than the one even on Monday Night Raw. He's, he must be cutting a promo for his life, because really... 
if they don't have any plans for him after this, what's he going to do? I've read stuff that the WWE doesn't really have plans for him after this. That they were going to potentially maybe send him to the cruiserweight division. And I also read the only reason he ever got signed was because uh, of his uh, promo of his promo skills. But uh, like I said, that was an excellent promo. Now I guess we're going to actually have to see him wrestle because you never, even in their tag team matches, you don't really ever see him wrestle. He just takes a beating, does a hot tag, does that stupid finishing move with Cass, and that would be the end of it. But uh, I don't like Cass's new music. Kind of lame. They're both in the ring right now doing a stare down. So uh, I know I predicted Cass to win, so let's see what happens. Well, so far, straight out the gate, Enzo charged at Cass. <clears throat> Didn't get anywhere with it. Cass just kind of scooped him up, put him in different kind of chokes and headlocks, done a few power moves. He just basically uh, had him over his head just now and threw him outside the ring onto the. Uh, the ringside floor and uh, Enzo is just kind of flopping around kind of almost like a fish but not as animated I'm sure that hurt like hell <laughs> and Cash is kind of just celebrating a little bit well as I predicted it was a short match uh, Enzo climbed back into the ring took a finisher that was the end of the match about a five six minute match. Cass over Enzo. Next match up is the Hardys versus Sheamus and Cesaro for the Raw Tag Team Titles. Uh, Matt is acting very broken, doing the uh, movements, the gestures, the biting. Uh, he was even talking kind of like him in the uh, pro show uh, promo, but not doing the uh, I knew you'd come that slang thing. He was just talking normal. So I'm wondering, you know, if this will be the night that pushes the broken Hardy storyline. I thought this was an Iron Man match. Uh. The bell rang and Sheamus pulled the Daniel Bryan WrestleMania routine and bro kicked Matt Hardy and they're like, oh, they got the first fall. I thought that was the end of the match. Um, so what, it's a best of two, three falls and an Iron Man match? So, I don't know. Matt Hardy's sitting outside the ring holding his face. I must have missed something along the lines, but whatever. I guess it's a 30-minute best of three falls Iron Man match. It's basically in this match, Cesaro and Sheamus are just isolating Jeff away from Matt. Uh, anytime they have a chance, they lure Matt into the ring. Uh, then they can beat up on Matt, uh, Jeff while the ref is taking care of him. Or they just do something to Matt, like Big Boot or... Uh, punch him in the face and knock him off the apron so uh, he can't take Jeff. Uh, and they just scored their second fall in 10 minutes. So, so far, there's 20 minutes left and they, it's 2 to nothing pinfalls. Sheamus and Cesaro over the Hardy. Man finally got tagged in. The Hardy boys were doing double team moves, uh, working over Cesaro. Matt Hardy hit the, um... Ugh. I can't remember. And then Jeff followed it up with a twist of fate. And they got a pin on Sheamus. About two, three minutes right after that second pin from Sheamus and Cesaro. <laughs> okay, now Sheamus and Cesaro scored a count out over Matt Hardy. So now they're leading this three to one. But uh, Matt's been particularly taking like a beating during. Well, I shouldn't say Jeff's getting a beating in the ring. Matt's got him getting the hiccups. Matt's getting it outside the ring. But he's staggering and you know he's pretending he's dazed and like I said, I'm wondering if this is leading to anything. 
Well, the Hardys just managed to gain a pin, a double team pin on Cesaro, uh, making, uh, bringing it to three to two. Cesaro, Sheamus lead. Wait. Oh, I was gonna say uh, Jeff just hit a whisper in the wind. It looked like he was about to pin Cesaro again. But uh, I was just gonna say the Hardys have been just getting beat this match. If there's a Hardy sitting on the apron waiting to get tagged in, he gets kicked in the face, knocked off the apron repeatedly, just time after time. Uh, and who's ever being wrestled in the ring is taking a beating from both of them. Um, and it's all pretty much been legal. I can't say that, that Cesaro and Sheamus are cheating. They're just dominating. Oh, Matt came in with a big save. Cesaro, oh my God, Cesaro almost landed on his head. Oh. Jeff almost got another pin on Sheamus, but it was only a two count. He's going through a series of moves. He's going for another pin. No, two count again. There's five minutes, 40 seconds left. Damn, now Matt almost got a two count. Matt Hardy just went for a moonsault off the top rope and almost got a pin on Sheamus. Cesaro came in, broke it up, and then Jeff kicked Sheamus' B out of the ring. This match has been lighting it up. There's three minutes, 40 seconds left. Sheamus and Cesaro are still in the lead. Matt Hardy with a twist of fate off the top rope on Sheamus. He spiked Sheamus into the into the apron, man. That was sick. So now they're tied at three with two minutes, under two minutes, 50 seconds left. And now Jeff's back in the ring. He's semi-fresh. Odd little thing there. The ref was keeping Jeff from attacking Sheamus. He looked like he was legitimately hurt from that uh, twist of fate off the top rope. Uh... Jeff basically just love tapped Sheamus and he fell to the floor or the ring and he went up to go do a twist of fate and Cesaro pulled him out and then Jeff uh, splashed them outside the ring but now he's got Sheamus back inside and it looks like he's going for a uh, moonsault oh they're doing a double team move somebody pin One, two. Sheamus Cesaro broke it up. Minute left. Matt's back in the ring and he's busted open, bleeding. He's bleeding bad. I don't know what he's bleeding from. Jawbreaker from Matt. Sheamus dodges the clothesline. Matt goes for a twist of fate, takes in Jeff. Jeff's on the top rope. Swanton, Sheamus, Cesaro. How is Cesaro pulled Jeff off of Sheamus? who was going for a pin. Cesaro pulled him off and got a pin on Jeff Hardy. Uh, wasn't Sheamus the legal guy? I don't even get it. Now they're chasing she uh, Cesaro around the ring. He just hit him with a twist of fate and they ran out of time. So the score is four to three, Cesaro Sheamus. Man, Matt is busted. I would love to know what busted him open. Good match. I didn't think it was going to be anything remotely like this. Lots of pissed off, disappointed people in the crowds. They're showing shocked kids and pissed off adults. Now they're coming in trying to stop Matt's gusher. Ugh. It's gross. The towel is already... It's a white towel. It's already halfway filled with blood. 
All right, well, they're finally showing where Matt's busted open at. His whole eyebrow is split. Like that, man. He's getting some stitches. I wonder who the hell got him. I wonder if that's payback, too, for Cesaro. Cesaro's got stitches in the same eyebrow, too, from uh, what I called payback for knocking out Jeff Hardy's teeth. Hmm. I'm going to have to watch that later and see who popped him and busted him open. Next matchup is uh, Sasha Banks <clears throat> versus Alexa Bliss for the women's title, Raw's women's title. Uh, it was only a few minutes in and Bliss did the broken arm gimmick again where her arm hangs. She must be double jointed. And it, she makes it look like she broke her arm. And of course, she, she used that to change the. Uh, oh. She used that to change the uh, momentum of the match back into her favor. She just grabbed uh, Sasha Banks' leg from the the ring apron. Uh, she yeah, of course she's hurt. That's fucked up. She grabbed her legs, yanked her off the ring apron, and her back and lower uh, upper shoulders hit the corner of the ring. And uh, it looked like Sasha Banks was getting ready to start crying, but then I don't think she has the time because Bliss is beating on her ass again. It was pretty rough. Like I said, if you don't know how the wrestling rings work, those are the hardest areas of the ring to do anything. People legitimately get knocked out there. She's still, like, struggling with her back. But uh, it, it, if she ain't hurt, she's a damn good seller. Bliss just hit the double knees to the back, which is a front flip to the knees onto her back, and then did a back flip with her knees into Sasha Banks' back consecutively. That was pretty impressive. Uh, Alexa Bliss just hit a Canadian destroyer on Sasha Banks, and it was excellently done. She went for the two. She went for the pin and got a two count, and then threw a tenter, temper tantrum. Now she's climbing in the turnbuckle. Oh! She went for her finisher and was met by double knees. Sasha Banks rolled her up into the bank statement. She has her in the middle of the ring. Sasha's using her feet to stop from my uh, ah, she still got it. She got the ropes. Wow. Well, I don't think fans are going to appreciate this ending, but uh Alexa Bliss retains by counting herself out of the match. But other than that, it was a good match. I'm sure they'll be fighting next month, or two weeks from now. Or no, it'll be four weeks from now, but yeah, next month. Well, I know I predicted Bliss to win, but this was just... I hate dumb finishes like this. What's this? What do we got here? Sasha Banks charges after Bliss on the entrance ramp and throws her into the uh, media boards. Bliss instantly comes firing back, spears uh, Sasha, then the headbutts her, throws her head first into the announcer's table. She kicks all the crap off like she's about to do something. Woo! Sasha blocks it, throws her off, and does the double knees out to the concrete effing floor. There are no mats there. Sasha is hurt. She's up and standing and taunting, but she's she took some bumps in this match, man. She just kicked uh, Bliss in the ovaries. <laughs> Bliss didn't seem to like that. Here's the double knees again. And oh, okay. Now he's woo. Okay, she didn't exactly land the knees like she normally does, because like I said, it's concrete. She lifted her two front legs up. She cleared... I think she landed on Bliss's head. That's what it looks like. 
She put it, ugh. You know, like I said, the knees are usually down on the opponent's shoulders, and she goes down like that. This time, it looked like she just asked her head, uh, just hit her with her ass and took her down into the concrete. It looks like, oh, Bliss has got a busted lip. Well, that's okay. That's a better ending, I guess. I'll, I can handle that. Next match on the card was uh, Miz with IC title versus Dan Dean Dan Ambrose Dean Ambrose. It was kind of a short match. Uh, it ended the way I predicted it to end with Miz retaining, even though I was a little sketchy about it. Um, it looks like that feud's gonna continue. So don't be shocked about that. Miz over Ambrose. Next match up, of course, is uh, Braun Strowman versus Roman Reigns in an ambulance match. Uh, Braun's kind of been in control. Right currently now, he's got the set of stairs. Hits Roman with him. Hit him again with the stairs. Strowman's just dragging the stairs behind him as he walks. Goes forward a third time, misses, and hits the, guard, uh, the ring posts. Robin is targeting Braun uh, Strowman's surgically repaired elbow. He's been hitting it repeatedly with chairs. Then Braun, of course, hulked up. He was blocking chair shots just with his, bow, his forearm, I guess. Roman Reigns wound up to go and hit him again, and Brock or Braun caught the chair, chucked it off to the side, and he started. He's been dragging uh, Roman up the ramp to the the ambulance. He just chucked Roman into the ambulance like he did on Raw. And I knew this was going to go all over the, the 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 arena, but so far it really hasn't. This is if you're counting the entrance ramp. Yeah, now it's on the ramp. I'm curious to see now what they do. Of course, now Strowman's going for the, the doors. There's no way they're ending this match already like this. Superman punched by Roman, and he's got Braun halfway in the ambulance match. But Braun is now fighting back. Superman punched again. Lands halfway in the ambulance again. Roman's trying to pick him up now and throw him in by his legs. Braun had Roman up on his shoulders, was getting ready to do some like running uh, shoulder tackle or something with uh, with Reigns. Reigns slid off his back and threw Braun Strowman through the LED boards on the, the ring entrance and literally... This is the first time we've ever seen anybody go through them and shatter them. Uh, Braun took out a whole section. Which I will say is impressive. But they've been selling it now for like three minutes. Both Braun's still laying in the heap of the, the LED boards and Roman's just sitting there. <laughs> they got back to battling out front of the, the ambulance. Roman ripped off some lighting from the guardrail and was beating Strowman with it. He beat him back up against the ambulance. And he went for, I guess, a spear. He was going to spear him into the ambulance. But technically, you'd think, well, you're going to go in it too. Well, Braun moved out of the way and uh, closed the doors and won. And as he was celebrating, of course, I see the doors open up and Roman jumps out and clotheslines Braun and starts jumping him. But... Strowman beat Roman. I don't think anybody saw that coming. Roman's using the ambulance as a weapon on Braun, hitting him with the doors. He threw him into the ambulance. And now he's going all stone cold, driving out of the arena with the ambulance. What are they, I don't know what this is leading to. Now... He's pulled out and he's in like the parking garage, just sitting there in the ambulance, huffing and puffing. 
staring out of the rear view. Now he's slamming the ambulance in reverse. <gasps> he threw it into the reverse into a back of a semi truck. There's no way in hell Bronze was still in that ambulance, but. Yeah, I attempted vehicle error homicide. I'm Roman Reigns. Welcome to the WWE. I have no idea what's going on now. They're still focusing on the ambulance. But Kurt Hawkins is being sent out to the ring. And now so is Heath Slater. They're calling it an impromptu match while they deal with the ambulance situation. Both guys are acting like they don't have a clue what's going on. Weird. They cut from the match to focus on the fire department coming and using the jaws of death to get Braun out of the ambulance. He's got phony, fake, theatrical blood on him, you can tell that. He's fighting his way, well, struggling with the firemen. They're trying to put him on a gunny, or a gurner, gunner. A gunny, I can't even say the word now. A gurney! And he's pushing them away, playing tough guy. You can hear him screaming. He tells them to leave me alone. As he stumbles off, I'm assuming looking for Roman. The next match up, of course, is Samoa Joe versus Lesnar. There's less than 10 minutes left in this pay-per-view. They're running that promo package again, showing what led up to all this for like the fifth time in this pay-per-view, eating up pay-per-view time. I mean, after, after entrances and doing the ring announcements and stuff, we're going to have like a seven, eight minute match. So I can assume this is going to be a garbage throwaway match. And it's pissing me off. We'll see. Joe is walking extra fast to the ring. That tells me something, too. Five minutes to 11, we still don't even have a match going. They're still doing ring announcements and all the hoopla. Like I said, a, a five-minute match, maybe? They still have to do the pin and go home. All right, well, at least Joe gets it started. He jumps Brock from behind. Knocks him outside the ring, throws him to the guardrail, starts throwing haymakers into the announcer's table, picks him up, body slams him into the second announcer's table, shattering it. Joe is just pacing, I don't know what he's doing. Now he jumped back into the ring and he's screaming at him to get back in. The ref's not even counting. Heyman's in shock. Yeah, it doesn't even. I don't. Yeah, they just said it too. I don't even think the bells rung. If this is gonna be what they do, man. Now they're doing the replay. Brock has yet to get into the ring. And there are three minutes, maybe two minutes left of this match. Heyman and him are talking in the corner. Lesnar just slid under the ring ropes barely. He's in the ring. 
on his feet. He's laughing, kind of, just standing in the corner. Joe charges him. The bell rings. Oh, shit. He charged him. He did the, the Kona kick. Headbutting Brock. Throws him into the other corner. Now he's kneeing him in the gut. Lesnar's now kneeing him in the gut. Lesnar's showing some life here. Looked like he was trying to get for a suplex going, but Joe fought out of it. Has him in the corner. Doing the punches. Throwing bows. Joe just took him to the ground, but Brock is fighting. He got back up. Two minutes in this match. Joe has Lesnar in the Coquina clutch, but they're standing. And he's holding the rope, so I don't know how. That... Lesnar dragged Joe into the corner turnbuckle and headbutted him. Brock's got Joe in a suplex. Two suplexes. Three. Joe gets a low blow on Brock. Ref doesn't see it. Hits a big Uranagi. Got a two and a half count. Joe is just sitting over Brock right now, staring at him. Joe keeps putting Brock in the Coquina clutch, but Brock is pulling the arms loose, breaking the hold. Now he's in it. He's in the clutch right now, and his face is turning deep purple. He's leaning. Joe picks up, or Lesnar picks up Joe. Sidewalk slams him. Lesnar went to spear Joe in the corner. Joe moves, spins around, tries to get him into something. Lesnar counters and starts going to Suplex City. He just got him three more times, hitting Joe with suplexes. He's hulking up, screaming. Now he's going for an F5. Joe slips out, got him back in the clutch. Lesnar got out of the Kona clutch for the last time. Hit an instant F5. Beat Samoa Joe. Like I said, I predicted this ending. I didn't want it to happen. They had a nine minute match, eight minute match. Hopefully they let these guys fight some more. But they're not going to cut into Brock's few dates, I guess. This is probably the end of it.